connections which show also different degrees of connectivity, resistance, and creative interpretation. Ah, the other. Yeah, no. Sorry? The, the, the second arrow. Okay. Okay. If you ever go to Bologna, ladies and gentlemen, it's a hot day. <laughs> go to the chalet Dai Giardini Margarita. It's a charming, if slightly run down, 1950s um, garden palace in the evening. The fountains go on. You can enjoy some beautiful red wine from the Veneto. And if you're an archaeologist, you can enjoy much more because you know you're in one of the major cemeteries uh, of um, fifth century Bologna. The other one being more important, um, famous, the Gitosa Cemetery. Here's the um, Etruscan town. Here's the Aposa River, which now runs down the sewer, sadly. And across this river sticks a very important um, Danes or Minion's group established a cemetery, which was excavated in the late 19th century when Queen Margarita of Lombardy decided to give the people of Bologna a beautiful garden and a chalet. Now, what did they find? They found the richest grave, is the Tomba Grande, which belonged to an elite woman, and she had a fantastic set of um, pottery and bronze um, drinking vessels which included to simpula. What are simpula, ladies and gentlemen? Simpula are used to extract wine from stamnoi and put them into the drinking bowl of the drinker in a symposium. Pellicule Ducati, 1927, um, looked at this a bit more carefully and found that one of these ladles, or um, simpula, had a remarkable motif, a youth jumping out of the mouth of a of a monster carrying a ram's head and identified this quite clearly as a version of the Jason um, myth involving the quest for the golden fleece. Now poor Jason, a little orphan boy, finds out that he's actually a prince, goes to the, the throne, his uncle's already there and says, well why don't you go and get the golden fleece and when you come back we'll talk about you being my successor. So off he sent with a bunch of heroes. He goes to the Golden Fleece, which is um, guarded by a monstrous snake. Boy meets girl. Girl is Medea, the, the, um, a supernatural um, sorceress who um, gives the snake some knockout juice. Um, snake goes down. Jason grabs the, grabs the fleece and goes back and claims the throne that is rightfully his. There's an alternative version, though. The alternative version has Jason being swallowed by the snake. The snake spitting Jason out at Athena's command. And you can see this happening right here. The Etruscans, who are, <laughs> are more humorous than you think they are, um, show us a version here where Athena co costs the snake. And he's like, look, lady, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you know, <laughs> this is, I think this is um, Quite good, but the Etruscans love this motif, and they show another Jason not drooping out of the snake, but leaping out of the snake, fighting for his life in, um, in a victorious pose. Whether this is a spandrel or this mirror that you can see here, but Haitsu, that's Jason in Etruscan, um, leaps out of the snake here, carrying the fleece with him, or here on this Carnelian scarab, we can see the same motif. Now, this motif has roots going back to Corinth in the late 7th century. Here we can see, um, in, a, in a sort of birth pose, um, a, a figure emerging from the mouth of a vile um, giant serpent. Now, despite the beard, um, supernatural snakes always have beards. Why do they have beards? Because, they, because the pharaonic uh, snakes in Egypt have beards. And all, Supernatural snakes have beards. This character has a beard, but his face is wrong. His face is wrong. Ojibal is the way the face the head of a snake should be, with a long line delineating the lower jaw. This looks different. It doesn't look like a snake. It looks like a ketos. Ketoi are the, or kete are the whales of, um, of the ancient Aegean, and these whales, they usually fin the whales that wash up on the shore have a frightening um, appearance with great open jaws, a, um, a, a 
triangular lower jaw and head, as they do in reality, and they are shown quite clearly and differentiated from snakes in um, Etruscan and Greek art. These kete are brutal servants of the gods who come against their victims by surfing on death, um, bringing waves like the tsunami, which just hit, hit um, these are the pictures of in Japan. They have various shapes and sizes, but they are known for their vile, stinking breath, and the, the waves on which they ride bring poison and perdition. Now, um, we can't turn up in a series of myths, the most prominent being Perseus. Perseus is flying back from his victorious beheading of, um, of the Gorgon Medea. Um, he sees a late damsel in distress, chained up on a rock. Um, in front of town, he goes down, he doesn't ask questions, he kills um, the Katos who's coming against her. Yes, and he gets the girl, there's a, there's a little bit of back and forth, as you can imagine, and off he goes and they live happily ever after. This story, which have excited Victorian artists, as you can see here by Gordon Jones, um, is, is, has become a minor story in the Greek legends. It must have been big, because in the constellations of the Greeks, um, the characters, Kephos, um, Daddy, um, Cassiopeia, Mommy, um, here, Jason, uh, um, Perseus here, Andromeda, occupy one quarter of the Northern Hemisphere in the skies. Um, the, the whole problem, why is Cato sent against the sit down? Because Cassiopeia said she's prettier than the Nereids. Poseidon didn't agree. Don't tangle with Poseidon or you get a Catos. And the way to get rid of the Catos is to feed them a princess. And this is what happens in this tale. Now, there are other tales along the Phoenician coast. Um, this tale was told in Jaffa, and what we saw here was the, um, was the uh, in Jaffa was the stone on which she was chained. In the next town, in Ascalon, we have a similar legend of a lady, um, Derketo, related to the Ketos, um, who jumps into a lake because she's been shamed. Um, her, um, she leaves a baby behind who is fed by doves. She is eaten by and turned into a fish and turned into a mermaid. The story of Samson in Gaza, the next Phoenician town, um, he is chained to a temple. He tears the temple apart. This temple belongs to Dagon, who has a fish-shaped monstrous aspect. So we see permutations of this myth being quite clearly attached to the Phoenician coast. Um, Heracles, grandson of Heracles, <coughs> also saves a damsel in distress. This damsel is called Hesione. She, her daddy didn't pay um, Poseidon, who had fixed the walls of Troy, so Poseidon sends, as, as per usual, the Ketos. Um, Heracles says he'll, he'll rescue the girl if he can get to Priam. Um, the horses of Troy, the deal is done, he goes, and they throw stones and they, both of them, the, the girls are the archaic because they're less helpless than they are later, they throw stones at the Catos, they, um, they shoot arrows at the Catos, all this doesn't help. What you have to do to win against the Catos is get into it. Heracles steps into the Catos, and then he kills him from inside and emerges as the um, Apollonia says, like a little baby um, without any hair. It's quite here soon before then. And he emerges out of the mouth of the Ketos, newborn. Now, this is important. Um, in Klein Klein Kolko, <coughs> which is an East Alpine um, center up in the um, Styria, we have a, a grave that you can see here, a fantastic grave with figurative decorated cysts. And one of these figuratively decorated cysts, this is the sixth century grave, shows a scene of a huge fish eating a person and spitting him out, as you can see here. And this is a nice picture. I feel sorry for the diver. But anyway, um, here, here we have the, this scene done in the local style, but had with an unprecedented story north of the Alps. Now, anybody who paid attention in Sunday school knows this story, yes? Jonah and the whale. The word of God came to Jonah, the son of Amitai, and he ran away. Jonah, his name means dove in Hebrew, um, um, doesn't want to do what God wants him to do, runs to the west, 
goes to Joppa, takes the ship past the stone on which Andromeda was chained, yes, um, gets into the sea. Um, the Lord brings the Ketos against him. Um, he lets himself be thrown into the sea by the, um, by the seamen. He, he then repents, worships the Lord, and is spit out three days later on the shore. This was always seen by Christians, the early Christian church, as prefiguring the um, Jesus Christ's uh, resurrection, and that's where the Christians use ichthos, the sign of the Jonah, to define themselves. Now, this all goes back to a story told in the Middle Kingdom of Egypt as early as the third millennium BC, the story of the shipwrecked sailor. A dramatic story it is. A, a um, businessman actually follows the command of the Pharaoh, goes to the Red Sea, ships down the Red Sea, um, has, there's a terrible storm, he gets cast on land, a huge snake appears out of the sea, he worships the snake, the snake grabs him, puts him in his mouth, but spits him out into a palace. And after that, he will take him home to be in the company of his loving wife with treasure. So because of, of, of his repenting, his initial fear, and accepting the snake, the serpent, he is spit out alive and can lead a new life. Now, let's think about how these entangled stories got into each other. These are obviously interrelated stories told by people at very, very different um, spots of the Mediterranean, and the symposium, of course, um, is something we can think about where um, singing, storytelling, myth-making, ritual practice, and ideological exchange took place in the guise of merriment. And here we can see symposium, 7th and 6th century, symposiast reveling from Nineveh to Chernetami. Yes, and they're all on their beds, sometimes up to no good, sometimes being very, very nice about it, and here at the end in Etruria, being part of a conjugal bliss. Now Dionysus the Savior, he is intimately associated with the symposium, and Dionysus is also a god who um, is mercurial, that was his, uh, his godfather more or less, Mercury, and he, um, he dies every year, he's stomped to oblivion by um, by the winemakers. He bursts forth in the wineskins in the spring. Um, he, he arouses passion so that respectable women become his servants and men. Even Zeus worships him. And no wonder that in the hopes for everlasting life, these golden um, sheep show him as the psychopomp, the leader into a felicitous afterlife. You drink the wine red sea, you sail the crimson waves in Greece. Um, whether it's dolphins <laughs> leaping along the edge of your wine cup, whether it's ships plowing their way through that little ocean that you have in your dinos, or whether it's um, this boy escaping a Katos with the help of a wine ladle. Um, to, 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 and you see this dramatic thing happening when you drink out of it. You, you lift up your skiffos and you see this guy scrambling out. Now, and here, and even Dionysus is famous for arriving on a ship with his merry men and marching down the street. It's just about finished. Um, and Dionysus and the Tyrrhenian pirates is also part of the cycle of jumping to the sea, except it's not Dionysus. It's the sailors who silly try to um, capture him. You don't mess with Dionysus either. Now, um, saving kindred souls is part of this complex. These men, turned by Dionysus into dolphins, at the end, save youths throughout antiquity, up to the point of flipper, which, <laughs> which is uh, today's version of this myth. Now, let's get this back together. Let's map what's going on. We have a map here. Red are the sites of these Jonah, Perseus, Heracles, Cato's legends. Yellow are the iconographic, um, the iconographic um, uses of them, where we have the iconography. They turn up mainly in Etruscan graves, as we've seen, and in Etruscan graves, which have, are written <coughs> in maritime iconography. You put the cline with the dead in an ocean ringed by dolphins and birds, the dove heading towards the west. And here the tomba daitori. Here is a soul on a hippocamp, chased by a bird, getting to that 
undying land, and a nasty little Ketos following him. Yes? Now, when you go to the Bolan Yerushalayim, Dain Dardini Margarita, we put yourself in the mind of that funeral ceremony for that great lady who died. The, the night is almost over, the embers have cooled down. In the morning light, you take a last drink to her honor, you dip that simple look into the wine, you pull it up, and what do you see? The youth emerging from the monster's mouth. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, brave thy victory. Thank you much for your attention. <laughs>